business, things like that. And I was working in a, at another company that this, my current company was a customer of, and I went for a visit one day, and I just knew that they did something jobs related. That's about all I knew. And they took me on a tour, and they let me know kind of what, what, what they were doing. And um, I just, I called one of my friends on the way home, and I just wept. I'm like, I, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm supposed to be with helping in some way. And so what I do, I just do health and safety. But the, the thing is, I, you know, I grew up in a Christian home. And, um, you know, I, I guess it was easy enough for me to believe that Jesus loved me because I didn't get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> you know, I was a pretty, I mean, my mother's here, so I have to say I was a decent kid. I didn't really cause any trouble, I don't think. You know, how about your sister? <laughs> oh, she was trouble. But, just, uh, but, <laughs> but, but basically, Not saying a thing. <laughs> thank Playing you. The fifth. I appreciate that greatly. Um, but, you know, I never struggled with drugs and alcohol. I never really lived a, a party lifestyle or, you know, I just was always one of those pretty straight-laced kind of people. And so I didn't cross paths a lot with anybody who struggled with any of those things. And, and I didn't think that I was a particularly judgmental person um, or that I thought I was better than anybody else. But my first day at the company, I realized that I did. Um, I walked in the door and I was one of only, at the time, other than upper, upper management, I was one of only three white people in the company. Uh, one of only two females in the company. At the time, most of our guys, we tried to get guys moved through about six months to a year, get them onto a better paying job, because we're helping them to establish a resume and things like that, and good, get back into the swing of working. But at the time, the guys who were there, most were all from like North Chicago. Most of the guys had kind of a chip on their shoulder when I first walked in. And, uh, you know, I, in here, little old short white me is trying to <laughs> come in there and help somehow with something. And um, what God showed me is, I, from the time I was little, I wanted to reach out to people. I always was the one that like wanted to do, hey, can we do community outreach? Or, you know, I love missions and things like that. But um, I, I realized walking in that I always thought that I was, because I hadn't done a whole lot in my life, that I was kind of up here somewhere, good little Christian girl, and everybody else was kind of down here, you know, all those sinners that are struggling really bad, and, and that if I was going to help them, I'd be stooping to help. And... Um, and the Lord had to show me <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the first things when I first walked in, I think it was, it was within my first week, uh, a guy named Pat, he had only been out of homelessness maybe a couple, couple months at most, very recently. No teeth, I mean, <laughs> just big old toothless grin. And uh, I forgot to bring lunch. And uh, I sit down and he looks over. The guy has nothing. I mean, the, the pay, it's a nonprofit, so the pay is pretty low. He has nothing. He like hands me his sandwich. And, of course, at first I was like, oh, no, it's okay, you know, I can run out to McDonald's, it's not, <laughs> but I realized in that moment, like, if that was me in his shoes, I would have been like, this is all I have. You know, and he was somebody that, in, in the past, I might have walked by on the street and been like, oh, he screwed up his life, <laughs> you know, and walked on. And here was this kind heart that I didn't know was there. Um, but what I also found, there's two, two things that I found out through working with this organization. Number one, um, people, how people respond when you treat them with dignity and you share the love of God with them, it's... Um, I don't realize how much people are hurting for that. Um, I, I wrote Christmas cards to the guys one year, and I just wanted to do, I didn't want to do just a New York, you know, Merry Christmas from Shelly kind of thing. I took, I took time to write a specific thing about each person that had struck me about them, something I saw beautiful in them. And one of our guys, Chris, came into my office in tears, and this guy was kind of, kind of a tough guy, tough guy, you know. And he came into my office in tears, and I'm like, what? He's like, why did you do that to me? I'm like, what? He's like, I don't cry. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, I'm not used to being, I, I don't know what it is to add value to somebody's life. Nobody sees me as adding value to their life. And all I had told him in the card was like, you, you know, I look forward to you make me laugh and smile every day and it helps me on the hard days, you know, which is true. And um, he just was in tears because nobody had taken the time to find something worthwhile about him. Um, but on the other hand of just seeing people come alive when, when and, and they listen, people listen to you when you actually treat them with dignity versus just handing them. I know a lot of people were just going to hand them a track and go on our way so we don't accidentally get touched by sin. Um, but what God had to show me is that he needed to show me his love through these guys. I mean, I, I thought I was going in there to help them, and they have helped me more than probably some of the, some of the examples that they've lifted me and how they're getting through their recovery. And, uh, of course, it's a Christian, Christian organization, so we'll pray together and things like that. But how they're going through their recovery really helped me because I battled depression. And there's not something I talk about a whole lot. But I was in a pretty bad depression at the time I, I went started working there, and these guys have just really shown and poured the love of God onto me 
And these are people that I might never have given the time of day because, well, they're felons, you know, got to make sure that we don't get too close. <coughs> uh, I've learned a lot about addiction and what it does to a person's life, uh, what homelessness, how it will forever change a person's view of themselves and, and the way they approach life. And, um, and really how, in prison especially, how um, your spirit just kind of gets broken and you're almost too afraid to go back out into the real world because you don't even know if you can function anymore and you know that people aren't going to want you there because you're that felon. And so it's been, it's been a learning process and seeing how they overcome, you know, society's view of them has helped me to recover from my own depression. So uh, it, it's just been this amazing thing. Like I said, seeing they've, they've kind of helped bring some life back into me as I've been able to uh, breathe some life back into them and treat them, you know, with, with love and respect and dignity. And uh, it's just been amazing seeing what's, what's come out of that. You know, these guys kind of tough guys come in and next thing you know, you know, they're, everybody's hugging everybody. <laughs> So it's just, um, I'm not sure past that what to share, but it's just its just really a neat thing to see what's going on with just taking the time to notice the people that others kind of walk by and uh, see the see the face of God in the, in the least of these. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.